My name is Beatriz Recinos. I am a, a surface processor research scientist um, delivering a sci science in the area of air-sea interaction. I work on the development and, doc and documentation of marine uh, meteorological data, um, trying to um, assess the uncertainty on uh, meteorological data that is being measured directly in the ocean uh, via ship uh, uh, meteorological stations, um, buoys, or any other instrument, in situ instrument um, in, um, uh, deployed in the sea. So basically, I try to understand those uh, records of meteorological data and, and see what errors they might have due to um, a, a instrumentation errors or other systematical errors. And, and what we want is to, with those um, measurements um, uh, that have been taken directly in the ocean, we want to construct a long-term record of air temperature over the ocean. And this will help us understand how the ocean is warming and also how these warming temperatures affect the cryosphere and the ocean. Yeah. My background is in large scale glacier modeling. So I develop, I helped develop the first open source um, global glacier model written in Python. So I learned a lot of programming. Um, and um, w this basically, during my PhD, I um, contribute to this uh, software that simulates glacier dynamics and the changes of the glaciers um, uh, due to rising temperatures. And I specialize in the interaction between the ocean and the glaciers and how the rising temperatures in the ocean affect how the ice moves uh, from, the, um, from the glacier to the ocean. And that it and, uh, and try to measure how much of these uh, ice will contribute to sea level rise. So I'm originally from El Salvador and I study physics um, back home. I earn a lot of scholarships, um, one to study in the US and then another one to do my master's in Europe. So I did an Erasmus Mundus master courses, which was called Marine Environment and Resources. And every six months, we study in a different country uh, in, in Europe, in a different university. I did my last semester here at the University of Southampton at the NOC. And after that, I uh, decided to do a PhD um, in polar research in Germany. And um, after graduating from my PhD, then I came to work for the National Oceanography Center. Since I did my, PhD, my master um, at the University of Southampton, I was always um, here at the NOC. So I was uh, studying here at the NOC uh, during my master's and I always wanted to come back because it was such a cool place to study. And it had also very good professors, very good researchers. And after I did my PhD and, and I moved to the UK, I really uh, set myself the goal to find a job at the NOC. So I try, um, I applied for an, in, an interview and I got it and I was really happy to, to come and work for, for the surface processes group because they, they deliver this type of research that I'm very interested in, which is this um, constructing long term of um, global temperature records, and uh, which is, uh, is, is key to understand any changes in our planet, like in the cryosphere um, and, and in the oceans. So um, because the expertise that the NOC has. And since I knew from my master thesis um, and my master courses that uh, this was a place um, that um, I really fit it, fitted in back then. Um, and, uh, and I really enjoyed my time doing my, my, my master's. Um, so I always wanted to come back. Yeah. For me, the biggest um, interested, uh, well, what I'm most interested in is um, not just sea surface temperature, but or also the whole global um, temperature record. Because if we have really long uh, global temperature records, then we can uh, use those uh, records to drive uh, models like climate models or um, glacier models like the one I developed during my PhD. Um, and this will help us um, understand um, how, um, what are the effects in the ocean, in this case, uh, sea level rise, which um, a lot of countries, including the one I'm from, are very affected by. 
And this is kind of what really drives my my motivation uh, and my in my in my research area. Just trying to figure it out: how can we uh, predict uh, rising sea, uh, sea levels and how we can um, propose um, policies uh, to mitigate for such uh, for such effects. Um, I don't. I think um, the amount of anthropogenic influence on the record is way bigger than the uncertainties. So yes, we ha there are uncertainties, and scientists need to work a lot to measure those uncertainties to be able to separate the natural and anthropogenic um, uh, climate variability, if you wanna put it like that. But um, definitely, the anthropogenic signature overcomes the uncertainty on on on, on the record. But we still have to work on to make this. Um, better? Well, I think from being from an ethnic minority, um, especially in polar regions, um, I think I'm very passionate of working on, um, on showing to other people that are from ethnic minorities that you can be a polar scientist, even if in your country there's no glaciers or ice sheets. Um, not necessarily um, you have to be from Nordic countries to study um, um, polar, polar or poles or, or changes in our climate, because we're all affected by this uh, phenomena. We all live in the same earth, in the same globe, and we, um, yeah, we, we have the right to also be represented in, in, in the research um, for, for these, uh, these phenomena. I guess gender is also, is, is, is also an issue, especially in, in polar research as well. Uh, because usually um, all these expeditions were carry, carried out by, by men and not women. So um, there's also a, a big gap on, on, on the representation of, of women uh, in, 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 in polar research or leading uh, polar research, leading projects and leading uh, expeditions to the Arctic, for example. I think um, the changes has, have to be done from the grants perspective. Like, for example, um, there should be more grants targeting women or ethnic minorities um, on the call for the grant. So, um, so then we know that we can apply to something and that, um, that grant, uh, they will consider um, only women or only uh, ethnic minorities uh, to, to earn that grant. So it, it comes from, from, from the, from the organiza big organizations that, um, that, that sponsor science and, and, and the change should come from them to, to, to target um, uh, yeah, gender equality and, and ethnic equality. You um, basically, all these, uh, in, in these, uh, they are a really good example, for example, how you can um, improve uh, the representation. Because um, in the scholarships that I applied, there was always a gender balance. So they were always making sure that there was a gender balance for the people uh, that, that got the, scho the scholarship. And also um, a representation of, of, of many countries, um, developing countries, and also um, uh, uh, f first world countries, because there was also uh, a scholarship available for people from for first world countries, and, and, and also, also poorer countries. So it's kind of like um, if, if that sort of system could be um, uh, like adapted to other systems where you can assure that there's going to be representation, uh, then it would be good. Yeah. yeah. For example, the Fulbright scholarships or the Erasmus Mundus, like the one I applied, um, you have to make uh, the, 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 the when they were selecting the applicants, they had to make sure that they were um, women mm -hmm. and men uh, equally, or um, also that they were represented in representing all the countries in Central America, for example, all the countries in South America. So they do that when they, they, you apply to a scholarship, yeah. And the NOC has this good program, for example, the Erasmus Mundus uh, Marine Environment and Resources that I was in, they had people from Europe and from all over the world. So there was a one person per continent representing. So it was really very diverse, yeah.